Megan Smith, and we will go ahead and get started. All right. Thank you so much for coming to Creative Mornings. If you want to follow along with us online, we're at hashtag CMDAO, also Creative Mornings, and CMN. This month, our theme is in. Uh, every month, we have a theme that's picked by our, well, from our headquarters, but picked by one of our chapters across the world. This month, it's from Rio de Janeiro. So we have a lot of flexibility on how we want to interpret in, and today our speaker will be coming to talk about ins in his life. And I hope you enjoyed your name tags today based on the R.E.M. song, The End of the World, as we know it. I wanted to thank our global sponsors before we get started. MailChimp, the one who sends out all the fun newsletters for us. If you're not using it, you might like to try it. It's a great way to organize your audience and to list and schedule things to communicate. MailChimp is also starting something called MailChimp Presents, a short form series of films and podcasts created for entrepreneurs. WordPress.com, making it easy to give everyone a platform to say hello to the world and spread your own content. They also have a series called Own Your Content, which is interviews with people who are content creators. How can you create original things? How can you create and keep your ownership of your content in today's digital world? And Adobe, or Adobe. We're going to be talking a little bit more about them, but they are one of our global partners. They encourage and want to promote community within the creative, I guess the creative community, uh, to build collaboration and inspiration. And they're going to be part of our story this morning. Also, Adobe XD is something that they're putting a lot of time into lately. Um, raise your hand if you have already used Adobe XD before. Yes, a good tool for wireframing, prototyping, and presenting ideas. For those who don't know, Creative Mornings is in 205 cities around the world. Raise your hand if this is your first time at Creative Mornings. We are very glad to have you. Raise your hand if you've been to a Creative Mornings in a different city other than Dallas. Nice. As you travel and make your summer plans, you might just check it out and see if there's a chapter where you're going and see if you can check it out and see what they're doing. They would be looking at the same theme as us, but interpreting it in a different way. Let's see, we're also in 65 countries, 20,000 attendees per month. A big thank you to Hal Du for hosting us here in this space. about something in a new way, but at the office you're constantly getting distracted. Or if you have a client visiting in town or want to have like some sort of event, like a happy hour or something, then talk to Jamie. She would be able to tell you about how you can use this space for your needs. And Union Coffee. Raise your hand if you had a latte outside this morning. <laughs> it's a little hot, but <laughs> glad you enjoyed it. We are glad to have them. Uh, they've been doing the food truck for I think about a year now, but they recently just opened a new physical space kind of over at Cedar Springs and Oak Lawn area. And they're doing a lot of community-based events, so you might be worth checking out what they're doing. A Dallas-sized thank you to our local partners. We're missing Austin CSI, but they've been a long-time partner for us. They are management consultants. They like to solve problems in the digital age. We have Rebel Riot, our print shop that partners with us on posters most months, and Creative Circle, who I know is here in the audience today. They are here to help you if you are trying to find talent or if you are trying to find short-term or long-term bids. And some of you may not know, but Creative Mornings is run by volunteers only. We have a dedicated team here that makes these events happen, from picking up the donuts at 6 in the morning to setting up the microphone to printing out signs. It's a team effort, so can we get a round of applause for them? Appreciate them and we appreciate you guys for showing up because we believe this is worth it and we like to see that you guys are here and getting value out of it as well. So now, I think the reason that you guys are all here is for our speaker. Uh, we saw a great reception and a positive response to him coming this morning. And so I want to talk a little bit more about Adobe, one of our global partners, because they don't just support Creative Mornings, they do lots of programs to help strengthen creatives and inspire them and build them up. And one of their things is called the Creative Residency Program, where applicants from all over the world apply, and for a year, Adobe will take them under their wing, help them, give them mentors, give them opportunities to attend global events, 
present at some of their signature events and just do all sorts of things and opportunities that you really focus and grow. And so Timmy Coker from Dallas, Texas got picked last year as one of these few people in the world to be an Adobe Creative Resident. Super impressive. And if you followed his work at all or if you are curious, find him on Instagram. I believe he's Timmy.Coker and he's also got Coker Studio. And you can see some of his amazing work which blends illustration and photography together. So I won't waste any more of your time. We'll get Timmy up here. Hey, how are you guys doing today? Great. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my name is Timmy Coker. As you can see, I'm a photographer and graphic designer. Uh, I was uh, one of the Adobe Creative Residents for the 2018-2019 year. That just ended in May. Um, I'm a Photoshop and Illustrator addict. Uh, I used to be a high school teacher. I'm part of the Sony Alpha Collective. 26, and I am a first generation immigrant, so my parents are from Nigeria, and that's where I was born. So, I'll talk about my story today. So, our topic today is this interesting word called end. And endings are an, an inevitable part of life, right? Uh, you have happy endings, you have unexpected endings, you have beautiful endings, you have what the F endings. <laughs> uh, and today I'm just going to talk about some of the endings in my life that kind of shaped the person that I am today, especially in my creative journey. So the first inevi inevitable ending I'm going to talk about is a painful ending, right? And this is probably the most important ending in my life um, that really changed a lot of things for me. Um, being Nigerian and being from Africa, my parents had this idea that they wanted me to be doctor or a nurse or a lawyer, like every African parent wants the kids to be that. And when we moved to America, you can just imagine how much more that expectation was put on us, right? We brought you from Nigeria to America so that you can be able to really accomplish these goals. And I remember coming here, it was weird. Um, I did not understand the culture here or anything like that. Um, and I remember when it was my senior year in college, my dad was asking what I want to study. And I was like, well, I love music. I play the keyboard. I want to go study music. And he was like, no. Uh, pick something else. And then I'm going to say in the accent, is like, uh, people who study music in college, they, they're not successful. <laughs> so I was like, OK, I'll we'll find something else. Uh, so what happened was that uh, my dad's brother, did biomedical engineering, so I was kind of curious what that was. And I searched it, and I saw that you could make robotic arms and stuff. So I was like, oh, that's cool. OK, Dad, I'll go study biomedical engineering. <laughs> and um, I studied that for a year and a half, and I was like, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> this is not for me. Um, and I wasn't doing well in science. It was just terrible. and so. This is this was a painful ending because I lived a life of trying to make my parents happy, right? I lived a life of trying to make everybody else happy, even if it cost me my happiness. And I had to end that, and the the, the way that I did that was by switching my major from uh, biomedical engineering to digital media. So I, I ended this toxic lifestyle of living for other people so that I could pursue what I really felt that I loved and wanted to do. And this was very hard because coming again from a Nigerian household, they did not want to hear that. My mom was like, what is a digital media? Are you going to study cameras? <laughs> and every time anyone asked her what I was studying, she always told me I was studying camera. <laughs> and, um, and so yeah, it was really hard because me and my dad stopped talking for a while. Um, I remember my dad was in Nigeria. I remember coming back home in uh, December 2011. And I sat down with my dad and I was telling him. And I remember her, he was not happy, I wasn't happy. I went upstairs and I went to cry, but I was putting the keyboard and crying. So it was, just, it was a good way to just release uh, my anger. Um, but yeah, I switched my major. My dad was in Africa when I did it, which is kind of weird. Because I told him through email. <laughs> um, and so yeah, and when I switched, I was so happy, right? This is me, my first camera, Nikon D3100. 
December 2011. I, I got it for $345 and I had about $350 in my bank. So I had five dollars left. <laughs> but I was the happiest kid ever. And so, as you can see, I got into Photoshop, started making this flyer, TC <laughs> and I started sending it to people, telling them like, hey, I do photography, I do weddings, and I do pictures of toddlers. <laughs> Which is the only picture of a toddler that I ever took. <laughs> but it gave me so much freedom, because then I got to express myself here, right? I got to mess around with different apps, when like the iPhone 3 came out or something like that. And all these apps were out, and this is when Instagram was heavy, so that's why they didn't score the format. And I just kept evolving. I kept pursuing this passion, and my work started to grow. And I started to see that I was starting to find my own style. Um, one thing I knew about myself was that I was very um, curious. So for me, it was always my art was just a way of exploring my curiosity, right? Like, how can I? Like, this was using the iPhone. This was using the iPhone. I was like, how can I push myself in the boundaries to make different things? And so I just kept honing in on my style, and I started to realize that I'm really drawn to portraits, and I'm really drawn to things that make people feel something, emotion. Um, my goal was to make sure that if you're scrolling through Instagram, if you pass my picture, you scroll back down and be like, whoa, this is awesome. And it made me just create these different types of artwork and stuff that I'm really proud of. Um, funny story, this is my baby sister. Um, I was doing this series called Flying Humans or Flying Colors. No, Flying Humans. And pretty much shot it on my iPhone. And what I did was I had my sister stand on like a tall chair and then she jumped. I'm glad she landed well. <laughs> because that was scary. Um, but yeah, it was just it was just a way for me to explore my creativity. Um, and yeah, so this was how a painful ending in my life kind of brought me to a new uh, just a new phase, a new chapter in my life. And so some of the lessons and takeaways I would say uh, that you guys can take away from painful endings is that you just need to take a leap of faith. Like in, in this context, this was me taking a leap of faith was in my gift, right? Um, in my choice to do what I wanted to do, uh, study what I wanted to study. Um, keep on pushing through the pain. Sometimes the best work comes from painful experiences, which is something that I've learned. Um, and you will be all right. It might take a while, but you will be okay. You know, eventually my parents came to my graduation. It was awesome. However, after my graduation, when I went back home, my dad was like, when are you going to get your master's in biomedical engineering? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> um, yeah, my mom asked me that. My, my dad and my uncles were asking me. I was like, did y'all not get the memo? I'm not getting that. <laughs> um, another inevitable ending is an unexpected ending. And this, this was another big thing in my life. Um, a relationship that I was in ended unexpectedly. Um, and I wasn't, I wasn't ready for it, but it happened. Um, and so, giving you guys some context, I was in a relationship for two and a half years. And just a disclaimer, my wife allowed me to talk about this. So. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I was in a relationship for two and a half years before I met my wife. Um, and what happened was, I thought this was the girl I was going to marry. I thought we were going to like just be this creative couple and whatnot. And then one day she just broke over me, and I was not ready for it. And what it did to me was, I just felt so low. I felt depressed. Creatively, I could not create anything. And I was already skinny, but I wasn't eating, so I lost more weight. So if I turned to the side, you probably couldn't see me. Uh, and it was it was just like a really, really dark time in my life. I didn't want to create. I was in the room, just turned the lights on. Um, and it was terrible. Um, but there was an opportunity that came for me to um, go to Nigeria, right? But because this relationship ended, I had time to actually go with my parents to Nigeria. Before that, I was planning to stay home and just and with my girlfriend's family while my parents were in Nigeria. But since she decided to leave me, um, I <laughs> decided to uh, uh, I decided to follow, follow my parents to um, Nigeria. And that's kind of what started this portrait of home. And so uh, this was my second time going back to Nigeria since I came uh, after coming to America. 
So I came to America 2004. I went back to Nigeria 2009. I went back again 2014. <coughs> and 2014, um, I decided to go with my parents because my grandma was turning 70 and wanted to do a. She wanted to. She was having a birthday celebration. Her birthday is the day before mine, and she didn't know I was coming. And so what happened was I got there, got the surprise her, and everything, and that was awesome. But the next day was my birthday, and I was like, man, I need to find something. So I asked the driver to take me around Nigeria, to take me to some of the areas that I was at, that I lived at, some of the areas that I might have seen when I was younger. And the reason I wanted to do this was because when I was in high school, people always asked me, Tammy, did you live in a hut? Did you hunt lions for breakfast? Uh, did you run naked? You know, all this crazy <laughs> questions that they saw, and crazy things that they saw on the Scarborough Channel, right? And so, when I came to Nigeria, after my grandma's birthday, I was like, you know what, I want to educate people on how beautiful Nigeria actually is, right? I did not want to go to the rich areas. I wanted to go to the areas where people don't know, right? Because I felt like there's so much beauty in that. And this trip really taught me that as a photographer, my job is not to make things beautiful. Things are really beautiful. It's just my job to help So that takes that pressure away from trying to make people, okay, uh, trying to make people look good. And of course, you definitely want them to look good, but it allowed me to just find the beauty in people rather than trying to turn it into something they're not. And so I went around, this is Makoko Market, uh, a very popular market, and we're just in the car taking pictures. This woman, I took this picture on uh, my last day, because I kept, we kept passing her every time, and she was working, but then this day, it just seems like she just worked too hard, and was just like, down. Um, this other one, I kind of stopped this guy a little bit. Uh, what happened was that I saw him sweeping the river, and sometimes they don't get paid to do this stuff. Um, but he wanted to do it because he wanted his place to look clean. And so he did it, and this was just him resting after working hard, which was like, just awesome to just witness that and take that picture. Um, this one here reminds me of my mom, just because of how hardworking she is. This is how she makes money, right? She sells stuff, but she has a baby in her back, and it just shows how hardworking she is. Um, this was actually the cover this is awkward. Yeah, this is actually the cover for the book. Um, and I'll show you guys in a second. And here's another one, a woman. I did not know what she was doing, but she has a bucket and she was about to cross the road and I just thought it was just an amazing uh, capture. Um, and so all of this was just for fun. But for whatever reason, Instagram reached out to me to kind of feature it on the blog. Um, the Nigerian Guardian newspaper decided to feature it in Nigeria, which was awesome because I, I think the kids in Nigeria got to see that we can have a career. Um, and that was probably one of the most fulfilling things in my life. Um, just being able to have people in my country be able to uh, just kind of see that it is possible to have this lifestyle. And so people started asking, are you going to turn this into a book? I was like, no, it's not my personal. Why would I want to do that? But you know, um, I decided to turn it into a book, and like it sold out so fast, which was awesome because I cared so much about this being in people's tables at their homes. I didn't make money from the book; I actually lost money. Um, but my biggest thing was that now I can kind of educate people on like how beautiful Nigeria actually is and see that we we live in houses. <laughs> and um, so yeah, and I had a friend, her name was Raven, but she was, uh, she had sarcoma, so she had cancer, and I went up to her and I was talking to her and I was like, hey, I want to do this kind of exhibition of my trip to Nigeria and some of my work, and she was like, hey, you should do it, do it. She was like, I will come, I would love to come, I hope this cancer goes away so I can actually make it to your event. Unfortunately, she passed away. Um, before, before the event. But before she passed away, she started this, um, the last time we talked, she told me about this foundation that she started to help other families who might be going through cancer. And so I thought this would be a great opportunity to be able to give back to that organization. So this exhibition, my first exhibition ever, was in honor of her and the organization that she did. The parents came, um, and all the money that we made, we gave it to the foundation. And it was just awesome because the mom was crying, made like, we were able to 
gave away like $2,500 to the organization. And I think this was the first time in my life that I felt like, as a creative, it is my duty to give back to the community whatever way that I can. And so that was very helpful. Um, and another tip for unexpected endings is that people will be in your life for a season and that's okay. Right? Sometimes we try to make people stay and sometimes they, they're just not, they just can't stay because now you're in a new season. So dust yourself off and keep going. I know you might feel that you might be hurt from that, um, but just dust yourself off and keep going. Surround yourself with community. I think for me, with this unexpected ending, uh, I wanted to be alone. Right, I was hurt, um, but I remember the day I got the news, I called my homeboy, I locked myself in the closet, and I was crying to him, and he, he talked some sense into me, you know, I was feeling less than a man, and he just, he just encouraged me, and so me and him met up, and I met some other people who were going through the exact same thing, or who might have gone through it already, so that was really helpful. Um, so now, I'm going to talk about a good thing. Um, and this is something that I'm really, really proud of. It's like my top three. And this is when I got the opportunity to be a high school teacher at my old high school. Um, I, we, I graduated from Mansfield ISD. And after college, I got the opportunity to teach at this high school. I was only 22 years old, and the kids thought I was a student. So that happened a lot. I had teachers yelling at me because they thought I was a student. Um, I got to teach photography and Photoshop which is an amazing opportunity, um, because I got to meet all these amazing kids and teach them that you can have a creative career and helping them tap into their creativity. And so the reason we kind of took pictures like this where our hands were in our faces is kind of funny. It's because uh, as a high school teacher, I couldn't post pictures of kids on my <laughs> Facebook, but I was so proud of this picture. This is my first year of teaching. I was like, we gonna post them. <laughs> um, and so we figured out just a way to hide. Of course, oops. Of course, he didn't get the memo. <laughs> uh, but it was it was it was an amazing it was an amazing career. It was definitely challenging um, because I had to kind of earn the kids' respect, right? Especially me being 22. Some of them just looked at me like, you 15 year old man. <laughs> And, you know, like some of them, like, he was taller than me. You know, I had to look at him like, man, you know. Um, but yeah, it was an amazing opportunity. I got to see the kids' creativity. I got to see it evolve. I actually had a student that was in my class for three years, and she went into college, and I got to hire her on, hire her on um, with Cobra Studio as an intern, which was an amazing opportunity for her. Um, so we took more of these pictures. I got to start the photography program at the school, so that's something I'm really proud of. By the time I left, kids could now take photography from freshman year to senior year, which was amazing because they so much. So here's some of the stuff the kids made. So uh, I was into like merging photography and some elements together, and so we started making stuff. And you could just start to see the kids uh, find their style, and the kids just, be creative. And this was an amazing opportunity for them. This was a profile that the kids took were doing a lighting test, and I promise I made it my profile picture for like two months. <laughs> and my kids like, Mr. Cooker, thank you <laughs> for making this your profile picture. Um, but yeah, it was definitely a good ending. Um, the reason I left was because I got into the Adobe Creative Residency. And so it was very hard. I remember the last week of school, we had the finals, and the kids made like a, they got a thank you card, and they wrote on it, and I just found it a couple of days ago, and I just, I lost it. Um, but it was, it was just an amazing experience, and I still talk to some of the kids today, um, and so yeah. The next type of end that I want to talk about is the end of complacency, right? I got to a point in my career, in my career, career where I was just like, doing the exact same thing taking pictures, doing all this stuff, and I was like, I need to push myself and try something new. So I got into this kind of weird space where I was merging photography and graphic design. A lot of people told me you couldn't do both. They said I had to pick one, and I was like, uh, I don't want to pick. And so I started this thing called a poster day. So for a whole year, I made a poster every single day. Um, on the left-hand side is my first poster. On the right-hand side is day 304. 
recording. And you guys can kind of just see the difference. Um, but I can promise, I can tell you, when, when I made this first one, you could not tell me nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I had my screensaver, I was like, what's up? <laughs> um, and looking back, I'm like, damn, that was Google, what is <laughs> And I thought it was dope, and I was like, man, Tim, you just made, you just made like, mirror glass wall. It's so awesome on Photoshop. Oh my god. Um, and then here yeah, I started messing around with like Cinema 4D. And I'm just going to show you guys some of uh, the posters. Um, so I got into this weird phase where I was mixing humans with fishes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because then Adobe just hired me to make something like that. So it, was, it actually paid off. Um, but I thought it was really weird when I was making it, but yeah. And here's another one. Another one. Yes, as I was teaching, every Friday I made a poster as a class. So I would show the kids how I made some of my posters. And sometimes since I was making a poster every day, that Friday was my only opportunity to make a poster. <laughs> so I made it live in class, and then I posted it on Instagram. Um, Here's another one. Again, fish. Yeah. So, um, I think it was uh, a picture that I took a while back, and I just decided to add some stuff to it. Here's another one. I tagged Kanye West. He said nothing. No <laughs> <laughs> and this was this was the old Kanye. <laughs> and here's another one. I got an opportunity to work with this uh, company. I partnered up with Marvel for the Wakanda jersey when uh, Black Panther came out and got to do a look, look for them. So this was like an amazing opportunity to just add photography and graphic design together. So I took the pictures and I added the graphic elements. But this was inspired by my brand name. Um, I love shoes. I'm praying one day Nike will hire a couple of to do something. But until then, I'm just going to do this on my So any new releases that came out, if I could not afford it, I just made a post out of it. So I it. <laughs> Which is pretty much all the releases. <laughs> um, and then here's another one. Very cool. I tried to get this shoe for my wife the day that it launched, and um, I forgot. <laughs> but we got her some other LeBrons, right? Yeah. Um, and so this project gave me the opportunity to become an Adobe Creative Resident. Now the story behind that is I was teaching, and this was 2018 last year, and um, I, was, I saw the Adobe Creative Residency. And what it is is that for a whole year, Adobe pays you a salary to create the type of work you want to be hired for, and work that will take you closer to your goal as a creative. So it's almost like a creative career start. Um, and they also open up their network to you. So I got to work with the Adidas, I got to work with Adobe, I got to work with the San Francisco Warriors. Um, and 1,500 people applied, and I was like, why would I apply to this? I don't know if I'm gonna get in. And thankfully my wife pushed me to apply. Um, and I did, I mean, I, I sent the application in like 10 p.m. and it was due at 12. <laughs> and um, the crazy thing is like, the next week I got a call for an interview. Um, and initially I picked something else because I was scared. I was like, I was kind of insecure about the whole photography and graphic design thing. And then Adobe was like, hey, we saw that you're doing this poster based stuff. Can you repitch um, what you would work on for a whole year that includes photography and graphic design and mix those two together? And that's what I did. And um, during the residency, I got opportunities to do workshops. I got opportunities to work. Um, and, and work with Adobe, and um, I got to work with the uh, Photoshop team. The, uh, the Photoshop on the iPad is coming out. I don't know if you guys are aware. So I've been doing this for a while. I have some of these posters here today that I'm going to give out. So for every beginning, there's an end, and for every end, there's a new beginning. And now I'm in a new chapter in my life. Um, my wife and I got married last year, May 5th, 2018. She's right there. Look at her. <laughs> so, we started this thing called Coker Studio a year after our, our wedding. So, May 5th, 2019. 
put our forces together to make something called Clipper Studio. And pretty much what it is, is we're specializing in art direction, photography, and graphic design. So putting all our powers together. And as me and her, um, no, that shapes again, because I can't draw. <laughs> so we do photography and art direction and stuff like that. That's us again. Uh, during the residency, it was Valentine's Day. And I was doing so much stuff, I was so busy that uh, I needed to like make time for my wife and all of this stuff. And I felt convicted about it. So what I did was while she was asleep, I made a poster for both of us. Because she's always talked about it. Hey, when are, you, when are we going to make a poster for both of us so we can have it in the room? And so I did it while she was asleep. Luckily, I had a printer at home. Got it printed. Put it on the table with some flowers. The day before Valentine's Day, she was happy. I was like, yes. <laughs> I did not know what I was going to do on Valentine's Day. And so, of course, we started Kobe Studio. It's been about two months now, and it's been doing really well. We've got an opportunity to work with Apple, um, the San Francisco Warriors, and Adobe. Um, and Sony has actually hired us for something as well. And here's a couple of stuff. And yeah. And so, Closing this, I want to say that the end is, you know, uh, the end is just like the end of a season, you know? Um, death is just like the end of a season. Um, and I believe that death shouldn't create any anxiety, it should teach you how to live, right? Even with the way things end, it should not create any anxiety, it should teach you how to live. Because as you move forward, you're going to learn from different types of endings that you've gone through in your life, and that's what happened for me. And so, uh, yeah, and so I'm done. This is my Instagram, this is Coach Studio. This is our website, you want to check out our website. Thank you.